All right. Hey, it's turned on. Look out. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. It's Tuesday. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you're working at home all the time in the studio, you tend to lose track of the day. I don't, maybe that's just me. Maybe Chris is crazy. Maybe. Is a poop poop in the woods? I got nothing. Okay. Hi, everybody. I hope you had a good day. I hope you've been having a good week so far. It's Tuesday. We're two days into it, right? It's, uh, you know, it's been a busy week for me. I've been getting all kinds of stuff done. But at the same time, it sort of leaves your brain a little bit, woohoo, right? Because you're just next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. And, uh, and the problem is that when because you're an independent creator, the things are so diverse, right? And like there's different hats that you have to wear. So you end up, you know, doing a whole bunch of different things. And in order to keep yourself on track and in order to keep yourself doing whatever the things are that you need to be doing. So that's uh that's been my day that's been my week so far anyways what do we got somebody's talking over here hey it's jim luhan get it on like chi chi jong hey man dave's not here man yeah uh so yeah while i'm chatting with you i am making a new stamp what um etching so i'm making uh, a signatory stamp so that uh I never have to sign my name again. It's just, uh, you know, I, honest to goodness, this is something I never really dialed into years and years and years ago when I was younger, but I had so much fun making the monkey stamp that I showed yesterday. And uh, thank you for the instigation to do that. You know who you are. Um, that, uh, yeah, I got a couple more pieces, and uh, I plan on getting a couple more. So I am making a little signatory stamp. What that means is it's just a signature that you see me put on each of my pages. And uh, I also have this character created by my friend Twinkle Pies, uh, who, uh, who is the art director for the, the comic company that we've been you know doing together for years and she came up with what's called the running man and it's basically just sort of a, a, a you know it's a character modeled after the letter r and i'll have to show it to you but uh you know it's a lot of fun it's uh it's it's me basically so i'm gonna do a stamp of that too i'm missing stuff i'm so sorry i, I gotta pay more attention it's that jim luan again Technical question. How do you share your screen while filming yourself? Okay, so yeah, maybe that'll help people out. So this I run my streams daily through StreamYard. Hold on. Kasabian getting carried away in my ear. Okay, so I run my stream through StreamYard. And uh, which I'm sure a lot of people know about. But what I do before that is I have a program called OBS on my computer. It's a free program, shareware. Uh, I'm all about the free. And uh, so OBS allows me to choose, to choose and to control the, the way that my, my uh, video goes out so that uh, because I've got a camera in front of me and uh, there's a, a camera underneath my, right there is the, it's actually a overtop scanner, okay? But what I use that for is the camera function in it. So when I do the live camera of my hands drawing something or showing you the original pages of something that I'm working on or something that I've just finished, that's the camera that I use for that. Now I have a third camera that is for whenever, you know, my best episodes, when my wife comes on to review a book she's read, and there's some more of that coming up, folks. Um, I'd like her to do a review of uh, the new... Uh, uh, Harry, uh, what's his face? Crybaby. Um, the the royal guy. That book is horrible. Anyways, but um, that camera faces her, 
So I can control those three cameras in this OBS system. In addition to sharing my computer screen, and I've got two monitors, but it just shares the first one. Now I probably could set it up so it would share the second one as well. I haven't really tried that yet. And I can also run my microphone separately through it. My sound for this for so many videos of uh, nobody wants to listen to my podcast podcast, which was last year's stream. Um, so bad, just so bad. And it was because all the different mics, the mic in your computer, the mic in this camera, the mic in that camera, they were all sort of coming through in equal measure. And uh, so what I was able to do in OBS was change the settings so that it just goes through the snowball now. And so because it just goes through the one mic, it's so much clearer. So anyways, yeah, so that, that helps me out. O, B, S. And uh, please look into it. It's, it's really helpful. And uh, it allows me to, to be able to engage in that way. Now, also, when I, so I'm giving up all my secrets for you, Jim. I go into Photoshop and I set up some ping files. And those ping files are uh are what you see here on the main screen so i'm gonna move my mouse over here so you see how i'm pointing at the episode 55 everyone wants to listen to my podcast logo that's a ping file in photoshop and obs actually lets me load video like visual files and image files onto it and it dawned on me image files are flat right They've got backgrounds, but what if what about ping files? So, because ping files have a clear background when you save them, it allows you to it allows the the image to sit floating in space, and everything else to go on underneath it, right? Which is uh, fun in the sun. And in addition to that, I have figured out a way in order to be able to do my intention with the little notes that are at the top isn't just to talk about what I'm yibber yabbering about today. But it's so that I could, if we're having a really great conversation and some really great information is being shared with each other, the initial intention for this little couple of lines at the top isn't to yak about, hey, there's extra free stuff on my Patreon. It, it was more of a, hey, I could put notes down and share some of the deets in real live time with uh, whoever's hanging out in the stream. Haven't done that yet, you know, but we will. We'll get to it. Um, and so this is uh, a couple things that I'm setting up in order to do better videos, let's be honest. Um, I have intentions to, to do much better videos for people because I really appreciate people coming out here and hanging out. But that's, that's uh, what I've got figured out so far. And I'm not a techni technical guy is the claim that I always make. But, uh, but I am fairly good at figuring some things out. So, you know, once I get a notion on something, I, I'll tend to use cheap or old technology and bend it to what I want it to be or, or try to, you know, come to ideas about how this could service in a way that maybe it wasn't initially intended to. But, hey, it'll work like that. Like my scanner camera up here. It's not meant to be a camera. It's meant to scan large page drawings. Well, I've got the scanner that's over there, my scanning bed. And I just have to do it in sections and put it together. But the picture is much prettier than the picture that comes from the overhead one. So, you know, you just sort of put things together over time. I hope that answers your question, Jim. O B S. Now, there's also some other shareware programs that I've come across that have uh, um, the ability to edit video and to do all kinds of other things. And uh, I haven't had a chance to really sit down to those yet, but uh, I intend to, because right now, clearly there's no editing or anything going on with what, whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, but I also haven't really invested too much in that only because I don't know that that's necessarily me. I, uh, at a certain point, I, I recognize I got to put a little bit of, I got to put a little bit of spit in my polish here, you know, um, but I really appreciate people coming to hang out for the streams. And I hope that some of the stuff that I'm, you know, whenever I'm able to show stuff, hey, try doing it like this, that that picks up for people. And I really appreciate the interaction and the dialogue that's on here. But when I, uh, and I'm going to open up the stream soon so that 
guests can jump in and out. Now, it's uh, not necessarily going to be a license for anybody that's feeling, you know, I'm going to come and join this on a regular basis. Uh, that's not, I, I want to sort of help promote people and what they have to talk about and what it is that they're working on and how could we share that and, uh, and share that in a, a way that, you know, we're all equally, equally able to come in and say, you know, I'm building a machine. It's going to change mankind. Tomorrow I'll tell you about a different thing. That's not what I mean. I mean, like, let's, let's take moments and, and, and engage and interact and put value into what each other are doing. Anyways, almost done. But uh, that's where it is so far. See? Easy squeezy. And I just realized, no, no, it'll stamp correctly. I, I was, nope, I've put it on there so it will stamp backwards. Anyhow. <laughs> yep, you gotta, you gotta, if you're doing text, you gotta do it backwards because that's just gonna come up. That's gonna go down on the page backwards. So there we go. Good stuff. Okay, what do I, I'm missing stuff and I apologize for that. What do we got? Hey, thank you. Great answers. Hey, thank you. Great question. All right. Here's another one. Have you ever heard of a break up? Have you ever had to break up a fight at the comic book shop? Numerous. Isn't that terrible to say that? Multiple fights at the comic book shop. I've had to inter interrupt. And uh, actually, a couple I've had to uh, physically interrupt. Silly. Uh, people are silly everywhere. Hey, everybody. It's Philip Chandler. And frankly, that's Frank Salazar. Uh, what is actually just signed up with Melon. He's a lot like StreamYard, but a lot cheaper. StreamYard is free. You get 20 free hours of broadcasting through three, StreamYard a month. I don't know how much cheaper you can get than that. Now, I pay the the first level, whatever it is, um, so that I can do these each day. But for the longest time, I was using 20 free hours a month. So, yeah, I don't know how much cheaper you can get than that, but I, I never heard of Melon, but right on. I hope, uh, I hope the Melon lets you engage with other people without other people having to sign up for Melon to, to engage with that. Uh, frankly, forgives me. Uh, what do we got? Bunch of nerds. <laughs> um, it, you'd be amazed the things that people would fight over. The thing that I always thought was, uh, I always thought was the, the stupidest thing to fight over is uh, variant covers. But I had a few of those, and uh, I just wanted to come up, knock their heads together, honestly, because uh, they mean nothing. So there's no, you're not going to have a bazillion dollars of value in variant coverage. You're just not. They're never going to go off like that, except for the one in 1500 ones. And honestly, the amount you have to pay for those, who cares? Okay, here's yesterday's page. Uh... <laughs> Melon has a free option. But the next tier up gives you more options. Oh, yeah, that's how it is with each one. Zoom is the same way. Zoom actually has a thing where I can draw on a whiteboard in real time, sharing the screen with you. And whoever I allow into this engagement is allowed to draw on the whiteboard from where they are with me. So that's something to consider, too. All right. What uh, <laughs> Jim says, the world needs to hear the comic book shop fight stories. Seriously, two guys threatening to kick the holy baloney out of each other over a spawn variant. Absurd. That was a that was a real thing. And uh, I'm uh, not a good guy, uh, a macho guy when it comes to engagements like that. So uh, so I never say cool things. So my my stories of those are probably not cool. Because if when if two guys are threatening, you know, bro, I'll do this to you. And, yeah, man, you you dream of that, and uh, you know, I I generally walk over and say something stupid like, uh, first person that throws the punch is the first person I throw out the door, and I say it like a dad, and I look at them both like children, good, behaving, and then I walk away. That's uh. One of the perks of being a girl of size, maybe. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, that life is behind me. I used to work as a, a cooler, a, 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 a bouncer and then a cooler for different bars. And so when I was managing the comic store, if I had problems, I dealt with it kind of in that same way, which was just walk over and just 
you say, please don't do that. Because you don't want to escalate fights ever. There's no, uh, I flew over there with a ninja kick. That is stupid. So, all right. Uh, this is yesterday's page. Frank says, variant covers are overrated. Listen, if you have, here's, here's the truth of variant covers. I'm going to say it. And I know I take these platforms, pardon me, but here we go. Variant covers is a gimmick in order to sell more copies of a product to people that think they need each of the different covers. I know people like to say it's cool to have different covers to choose from, but that's not the psychology behind variant covers in the marketplace. So, you know, when you do 16 covers of a book, there are people that are compelled to try to find 16 covers. And as a publisher, when you do no differentiation at those issues other than the 16 different covers printed on it, I don't think that's fair. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was Scott Circland and uh, check out Cir uh, Cirqueworks Art Labs. It's a cool channel. He, uh, he had a really neat thing today about uh, getting out to getting an art career. But uh, um, Scott had an interesting thing. He calls it, I think, Remarks, where he takes paint pens and he draws on a cover. That's a variant cover for him. He'll specifically notarize a cover. That's not true. He has put up variant covers, but that to me is a beautiful way to do a variant cover. So kudos to Scott and everybody else that's doing that. Uh, I don't have a problem with independent people doing variant covers because it solicits more sales. That's great. I have a problem when people have uh, compulsion or an addiction to it and think that that's, uh, that's, you know, investment. So just too many years of too many stupid things over, over variants. Anyways, frankly says, I want that spawn cover. Well, I'm going to spawn a butt kicking if you don't shut it. <laughs> I, uh, I promise you, I never said anything that cool in, uh, in, uh, in interaction with anybody. <laughs> I'm not that cool. Uh, frankly says, I like certain covers to get the young and dead issues, keep the variants, and gave the standard issues to my son. Hey, there you go. No, Scott, again, I'm saying Scott is like an exception to 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 that. And independence, I don't, if you need to get some more sales, get some more sales. But, and it's cool to be able to engage with your friends and have them do work in your project. That's awesome. But I really like his remark idea. I really, really like that. And, uh, but when Marvel puts out 25 covers of a book and people are biting at the bit and almost getting into fistfights over it, that's dumb. So, okay, I'm with, uh, I'm, I'm with the stream. So this is yesterday's suggestion, uh, rock and roll librarians. My wife had some fun input. I told her about this as we were having a cup of tea, I think, or something together. And, uh, and she says, I said, rock and roll librarian. She, 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 and she says, yeah, like, I don't know, roller derby. <laughs> Which is so completely random and wonderful. And, yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> so, so that's what yesterday's page ended up being. Uh, I'm going to switch. Watch this. This is OBS that lets me do this. I'm going to switch uh, settings. Here we go. So, oh, I'm going to get some, some lights on, too. How's that? All right, so this is the uh, original pages. That uh, These are the images that I drew on a couple of sheets of paper. And uh, I transferred this one over because uh, I wanted to have a little more room. And uh, there's the, uh, the rock and roll pose at the end. And so some of the gray tone that I got in the image is because I didn't ink it, just left the pencils, and uh, had some fun. You know, it's not uh, everything lines up spit and polish for every panel in the, in the finished page. I don't care. It's sometimes you just gotta be loose, you know, you try different things all the time. Anyways, these go in the pile. So that was a lot of fun. Here's the, uh, I'm almost sold out. I'm excited to talk about this. I'm almost sold out of these. The one page comic extravaganza volume one. And uh, if I reprint this, I'm gonna add more to it. And I'm gonna do it as a hardcover. Because what, what's the difference? What's, you know, might as well. So, yeah, good fun. Frank, I sully every, Frank says, my, my suggestion was sullied with Robert roller derby. You bet it is. I, I sully every suggestion by taking a weird bent on it. 
Ah, Philip says the Stray Dog series had an interesting way of interesting, interesting way of doing variant covers. Whichever one you got, the other covers are inside the back as pinups. Yep, yep, that that is a novel idea that they did. That I really, really respect that a lot because uh, it's it's called options. It gives the collector options. I want this cover as my favorite image, but I still got those inside. And if I can't get my favorite cover, technically still got it inside. Right? That's uh, that's a challenging thing. It really is a challenging thing to. Uh, you know, to sit down and um, pursue your collecting and pursue your interest when so much of the marketplace is kind of shady, right? Like, and unfortunately, in comics, there's an awful lot of get-rich scheme thinkers and and uh, people hiking prices and values on books for no reason and stuff like that. So uh, I, I tend to back away from that. I used to have to deal with it all the time. I don't anymore. So I tend to back away from that and just uh, I'm really appreciating and enjoying the process of making. I've got a couple of uh, uh, more opportunities that have line, been lining up. Very excited towards those. Uh, trying to figure out scheduling because uh, I've got X amount going on. And uh, I'm gonna, I want to talk about something while we're working today. If anybody has one page suggestion, before I forget, let me get back to this. If anybody uh here we are there's the standard you have a one page comic idea that you can put in one or two sentences put it here in the chat or in the comment section and uh and we'll give it a shot we'll put it on the list and give it a go uh so you know um all right so uh something i want to chat about is uh it's really important that you figure out okay i'm gonna by the way i'm gonna work on today's suggestion unless anybody else shuts a new one at me but today's suggestion is going to the book or going to the book. Uh, Citadel at the end of time. Citadel at the end of time. I'll write it on a post-it. Stick it nearby. Okay. Citadel at the end of let me check my notes. Time. And uh, this is one of the suggestions, but unfortunately I didn't write down the name of the person. I got really caught up in stuff towards the end of doing one pagers before I worked on the last four books. And uh, so I, I didn't find, I lost the paper that had everybody's names on it. So that's our idea today that we're going to work on. And I'm going to try different something different. I'm going to try working... Uh, reds, blacks, and whites on a gray base. And so this is the tickle trunk of toys that I put beside me in the studio space. It's a red Posca pen. <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I am. And uh, yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to uh, start monkeying around. But uh, what am I missing? Still haven't picked up a copy of the one page comic extravaganza. I still got a few left. Uh, my, you can check out uh, Christopher Runsman dot uh, com. I had to think about that for a second. Oh my gosh. My phone investigation of what my candy cap means has hit a wall. Four Canadian friends and went dry. It's Aboriginal. It's colors, buddy. And so I, I sent you a message on that. It's the different colors to represent the different Aboriginal communities across Canada. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You're probably doing it through a robot and the robots always say whatever they want to say and not what you necessarily do. So, damn it, CB. See, I'm not serious. Okay, so, yeah, that's the jazz. Uh-oh. Phil and Frank are flirting. Anyways. Yeah, so I hope, uh, everybody is, uh, is all right with me uh, yapping for a second. It's really important that we find our own voice creatively. And so what I mean by that is twofold. I, I have this realization is kicking in on me lately. And that is I don't necessarily know what community I belong to. Because I don't do 
indie books per se. And uh, I'm going to take this off. I don't do indie books per se. And I don't do um, main, you know, the superhero community books per se. I don't do kids books. And, uh, you know, so many of these, these conventions, any of these events that are anywhere relatively new to me, I, uh, you know, I don't necessarily fit into those niches. And so I was just thinking about that last night because there's a big uh, indie event coming up in Ontario here soon. And I, I don't fit into that. And, I, and the reason I don't fit into it is it because everything about this alternative convention is about alternative niche marketing. And that niche marketing is uh, either alternative lifestyle, um, differentiation. What I mean by that is, you know, disabilities or mental health or things like that, and, or, uh, or uh, communities. And by communities, I mean Aboriginals or, or um, out culture or, or, you know, uh, African, North American, whatever you want to term things as opposed to uh just being alternative comics it there's it tends to really it really tends to sort of go into to types types of stories and types of journeys and there's nothing wrong with that i think everything has its place and everything has its uh, necessity to support but i don't necessarily fit in any of those things other than being a little bit of woohoo you know on a regular basis and uh you know having my quirky sardonic style or approach that I take to things. So, you know, I don't fit in there. And when it comes to regular comic cons, I, I don't do mainstream super duper stuff. And I, you know, I can't stand fan art. So I, I don't want to sit here and draw um, uh, Captain America, you know, or, or whatever else it is. So I don't necessarily fit into that niche either. So so I'm trying to figure it out. And this is why I'm doing everything, by the way, in a landscape format, which is what this sort of sideways way of, of drawing comics that I do is. It's called landscape format. And it's because if there's a way that I can connect to the not just not just being locked into comic book stores because in all honesty most independents cannot compete with the larger publishers they just can't i know for years of managing a bookstore that that stuff falls to the wayside or gets relegated to wherever and in the, in the back issues or the shelves if there's any shelves ever ever devoted to them the store that i, I worked at we had a whole specific section developed uh, dedicated to that nobody looked at it anyways which was disappointing or for the most part, I'm sure people say, oh, I did. Well, that, I'm glad, but it's an exception to the rule. So how do we make it available for ourselves to become uh, more able to step out into a larger stream? That's where you start looking at publishers like Viz or Scholastic. Scholastic tends to be largely aimed towards young adult or kids. And Viz is clearly aimed towards manga, anime adapted you know in the manga or manga that eventually gets adapted into anime um so that's you know not necessarily ones that i can look at and if anybody has paid attention to the news lately a lot of the second and third tier publishers are going bankrupt so as far as it goes for the availability to to you know try to pick up work and pick up the ability to be published by them, that opportunity is going by the wayside. And so I had submitted stuff to one. They liked it. They were, and they, I was in talks with them about doing a book for them. And I had been given, you know, the, the first stage negotiation about let's do this book. And, uh, and then I didn't hear back for them for two weeks, three weeks, Announcement about being bankrupt. So that sucked, but you know, it ha these things happen. Um, sorry, I'm not keeping up. What do we got? Jim, you fall into that weird no man's land like like you. Yeah, I, that's true. I believe that. Hence our brotherhood. Right on, brother. Right on. I'm down. Um, 
yeah i appreciate that that's 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 true and i, I really feel an affinity for everybody that's uh been engaging here this is this is uh this is how we're all gonna figure out our place in the world maybe is by being able to uh interact and engage with uh other creators no matter how the distant we are from one another physically malcolm says it's called doing your own thing malcolm doesn't fit with society at all i think that the uh, thank you malcolm i i uh i definitely do my own thing and uh I, th I think that there's a lot to be said about authenticity and being an outlier and, and following your own creative voice. But sometimes there are moments that we all have where uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really keen about having, you know, this very dis different style and different approach about making things. But at the same time, it would be kind of nice if I could find you know, an ability to branch out a little bit farther or figure out some avenue to get connection to it. I've looked at a number of blog sites to put up the two books that I have ready to go on blogs. And uh, that don't, I look at the work that's on those and I don't fit in either of those frames. And then the other ones are all paying, paying to do it. So I'm still investigating that. So that's challenging. But, you know, authenticity and uniqueness and not fitting in with everybody else because you do your own thing. I'm a big, big fan of that. Finding your own creative voice isn't easy. But if you can do that, and if you can do enough work and do enough stuff in your own style, we are exploring avenues that maybe other people don't do. And if that means the idea of uh, mixing media or the idea of really having a specific stylized look, great, right? But... Um, it also sort of isolates you a little bit more. Uh, Frank says, I'm doing a fan art thing now, but I do it to warm up. If I can get something I can sell, great. Helps with a bill or two, but I don't do fan art. Yep, cool. Um, Brothers of Maple, there we go. Uh, hey, how you doing, Raul? Welcome aboard. We're just talking about authenticity and the challenges that authenticity then creates because uh, where do you fit in? Uh, Frank, that's gross. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so that, you know, that's that. And it doesn't matter who it is. At a certain point in time, you're going to find there's those little moments where there is a part of you that is looking for some degree of camaraderie, you know, some degree of it, wouldn't it be nice to to uh, to feel like there's other people that you were trying to well as i'm drawing this mount that hill you know and uh and so i, I appreciate the opportunity presented by the engagements and uh and uh the friendships you know that we're, we're all making here and i really mean it when i say at the end of each of the streams that i'm really looking forward to seeing what people are doing i really I'm specifically interested in seeing what you're producing. So anybody feel free to share that stuff because, uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's how we can, uh, try to support each other in our endeavors because everybody has those, those bumps in the road. Everybody has those hiccup moments where you're like, what am I doing? Is there even any purpose to this? And what, what's the reason that I spend all this time and does anybody care? Because those internal voices that all creative people have, all creative people have. So the most brave and secure individual, the most alternative and weird and surreal individual has those voices. You know, some people make a career out of them, like Woody Allen or Basque or, you know, just people who's challenges and their their inner turmoil their inner duress just spills out of them in their projects um some people try to process those things through their work francis bacon you know um some people try to uh, deal with the situational things that present themselves to their life and nameless people right so there's a lot to be said for that but it, it still means that uh we're all sort of in a similar 
kind of journey at the end of the day is what I'm referring to in that. When I talk about creativity, if, and if I'm rambling and people don't like it, let me know and I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the Smurfs or something. I don't know. But when I'm talking about unique individual creativity, I'm a big fan of, and this is one of the things that when I go to different schools and talk to people about storytelling and self-expression and finding a creative outlet for you to, um, for you to try out in your life, and everybody's, oh, I can't do anything creative. Yeah. Well, this, you're the person I'm looking for, you know. Uh, so when I talk at these schools, you know, I'm talking about just doing the thing that makes you feel okay, gives you a sense of release, and and produces a thing. And even if this thing is the most ha the most haphazard and nonsensical thing in the world, it's a moment of self exploration. And expression right and there's nothing wrong about that but when we get to a point where it goes on to the next stage now what I mean by the next stage is say you've been doing this for a while and you've been doing your paintings your drawings your sculpture your dance your music your your your, your film um, Jim and you're either gonna two things are gonna happen one you're going to develop your own stylistic approach. You're going to develop your own voice, per se. And the opposite of that is that you're going to kind of do that, but more so become static. And what I mean by static is because you're, this is the way that I'm doing and I'm, and I, there's no clear kind of plan behind it it's just i i do whatever arbitrary thing comes along and if i see something trending or if i see something that's popular i'm going to jump in and and join in on that wagon too without uh you know without the investment of trying to figure out what it is about that that attracted me to in the first place so i'm never going to be happy with the results you know those sort of um what's the term i'm looking for maybe sophomoric approaches to to creating and to self-exploration kind of so it feels sort of like you're in school it sort of feels like these are just exercises while that is not necessarily what i would arguably say is your own unique voice your own style i will still advocate that it's helping you get on the way to that it's just sometimes if you're resting in that position, if you're just, you know, today I'm going to draw a tennis shoe and tomorrow I'm going to work in chalk pastel, you know, okay, that's great. Um, I, I, yeah, I love the different medium, but what are you, what are you, what are you pursuing? What are you saying? And what are you investigating uh, creatively? Is it just that you're trying to find your moment or is it just that, uh, you're kind of directionless. Uh, what is this? I love it when you ramble. And it gives me school girls. <laughs> what am I getting into? I want to do a Brothers of Maple live stream with you and Phil. Talking about Canadian pop culture. Oh, well, that's kind of fun, Frank. That's a uh, tickling uh, fancy. Yeah, that's yeah. Things like that are fun. It's uh, that's that's yeah. Sure, let me know. Um. In, in the course of finding your own creative voice, I think that you have to allow yourself to make mistakes. You have to allow yourself to not do things like other people. You have to allow yourself to just look at what it is that you're doing and finding the comfort in that, right? And uh, allow yourself that. Allow yourself that moment where I enjoy doing things this way. I enjoy that this is the style of how I draw. I'm not going to draw like Michelangelo, but I, I can do this. Right? Um, own that. Own that. Dive deep into that, those waters and explore that. Because I think that what is going to come out of that, what the output of that is going to be, 
is yours. You're going, you have things to say, and this goes for everybody. This go, if I'm holding a mirror up, this goes for everybody, right? You have things to say that other people don't. You have insights into the world and experiences in the world that other people have not had. You have your own unique perspectives. You have your own unique way of approaching visuals. And, uh, but if you're, if everybody tries to be John Byrne, then nobody tries to be anybody else. And I use John Byrne as a specific example. And the reason I do that is when I say John Byrne, uh, uh, and specifically I'm, I'm writing and drawing one page comic projects each day on the string, right? So you're thinking of John Byrne, the comic book artist and writer, but I'm not just talking about that John Byrne because there is also an absolutely brilliant British painter named John Byrne and, uh, who's qu actually quite celebrated. <laughs> I think he's Scottish to tell you the truth. And uh, I, I really enjoy his paintings. But that's the funny thing about uniqueness and authenticity is that here's these two different guys with the same name, both working in the arts and doing completely separate, unique, different approaches to work and different work entirely. And uh, despite the fact they're both being named John Byrne, they both have their own unique self and authentic voice um there's and and talk about collision of realities um the comic book uh, artist frank quietly and if you don't know frank quietly's work please go look it up because he's a wonderful illustrator he did we three he did uh a number of other pieces but um he interviewed the painter john Byrne. Not the uh, you know Frank quietly interviews John Byrne. I went really, all right. Let's see, see that. And then the painter John Byrne came up, and I was pleasantly surprised <laughs> because that was so uh, you know such a such a sideways step for me because I didn't think that that would that that would ever happen. But quietly Scottish, so it's not entirely surprising. Okay, I'm missing a bunch of stuff, and I apologize. Hey, Philip sounds like he's down with that. Let me let me know, guys. I'm down. Um, Jim says, by the way, the first one that throws a punch in his form is out of here. <laughs> and my bouncer voice is that my bouncer voice? I, uh, yeah, I didn't, I don't know that I necessarily had a, a bouncer voice other than, uh, yeah. And I said stupid things. I said stupid things when I would say, Hey, listen, you, you're being jerky. It's time to go home. <laughs> jerky. Nothing says I'm a macho guy like calling you jerky. Quit being a poo-poo head. Um, uh, Jim, wear a Canadian cap and I'll sneak you in. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, so there's some challenges in in doing my own thing and and rowing my own boat, you know, my own way down the river. But uh, at the same time, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And I hope that whoever is engaged in this stream and, and, and whatever the processes are of self-discovery and expression that you're following, you're doing your own thing and you're enjoying doing what you're doing. And the reason that I, I, uh, I hope that is because that's the stuff that makes it more interesting to see what you're doing than, and I'm going to use fan art as an example. Uh, that is the stuff that makes it more interesting to see what you're doing than the 500th variation of Spider-Man in the same pose or the 500th variation of painting um, birds at a bird feeder or whatever it is. You know, your painting of birds at a bird feeder that you did with a four foot stick standing that far away from a large canvas is uh is automatically going to have a more unique statement than a traditional watercolor painting of, of birds and there's nothing wrong with watercolor painting of birds but that person doing it with the stick you know and at the end of his stick is his watercolor brush and he's trying to figure out how to, to attack things in that specific way 
that's going to have a different voice and that's going to have something to it that may defy convention and it may make people look at this medium in a different way and that's fun you know there's uh i'm not a big proponent of institutions and when i talk about institutions i'm talking about uh going to school for art and the only reason for that is that uh we live in an age now where all of this digital media allows us to further our education through youtube or wherever else right and uh so i think the necessity of spending all of that money and and uh getting into that servitude over something that maybe you ne didn't necessarily need to do uh can be found online but i also don't like where institutions say this is the way to do a thing this is the proper way to go about that or here's the basics of how this this all works and uh if you do it you know people that don't do it this way that you know they're clearly doing it wrong and i don't like that like, you know that's but there's something to doing it people doing things in their own way is that they're going to develop themselves and whether it antagonizes whoever it is that's facilitating the educating part of that it doesn't matter you know it's uh it's people finding an opportunity and an avenue to to learn the foundational skills to be able to creatively express themselves in ways that they didn't before so there's no such thing as that's the wrong way to go about it as much as there is uh you're on a journey you're on a path so now that's probably argumentative for some you know we can validate all kinds of things it doesn't necessarily you know, it doesn't necessarily legitimize them. It's just a take. It's just a hot take. There's bigger things to take into consideration than art education bad. There's uh, an awful lot to be said about uh, art education expensive. And, uh, you know, any any uh, anything that excludes, you see, and this is... Uh, Chris is Canadian socialist leaning. Anything that excludes a lot of people, I'm not a not a big fan of whatever that thing is. Before I get into this, I got to get uh, something more happening down here. Um, yeah. So that's that's my challenge with that is that you, if you watch a video and you say, "Hey, here's how how to do that. Here's how to do this step in say a, a computer drawing program." I've keep coming across a number of videos saying there's three different ways that you can do this. That's awesome because uh, I tend to do it this way, but maybe you'll like it this way. I know that. And then there's also a thing in the guide or in the, the manual or program program guide or whatever you call those things that says you should do it this way. That is the sort of stuff you need to look for because you know, that way you can, uh, you know, bend, bend the wheel in order to drive you the way you want it to go. And, uh, and that's how you find your approach and your creative path and your way of doing things. Some people like elaborate steps in, uh, in their creative process. Some people like the most simplistic steps that they can have and be able to do different things. Uh, hot take is just one letter away from hot sake. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Jim, is that your way of saying, hey, Chris, you're too heavy? Um, yeah. Anyhow, back to the unique and creative voice. Uh, please, uh, I want to open the door to people uh, uh, feeling fine and, and uh, sharing what they're doing. If uh, I'm not good with, I, I okay, I'm... Uh, I'm going to admit something, and uh, hopefully my wife isn't here to hear me say it, but I'm a workaholic. And uh, I'm not good at stopping working to doing a lot of the things that I should be doing um, to engage better with other people. And what I mean by that is uh, I, I often forget to to look for other people's 
sites or whatever else and sign up for them and, and look at those and it's not any intended slide or anything like that it literally is a case of uh trying to figure out how to juggle 16 apples for me and uh that's something that i'm working on on a regular basis but anybody that watches this stream uh feel free to uh throw me a shout out and say hey here's what i'm doing and you know if it's in one of the social media things the Instagrams or the face of books or whatever else or or even uh, put a comment in um, the videos for YouTube here and say hey go check out my page and I will try to immediately do so right then and there uh, I'm not suggesting by any means however that uh, in doing so is oh send me your stuff and I'll take a look at it and let you know what I think because uh, who am I, right? Uh, I am uh, just another person making making pictures, you know. And uh, again, you're going to be doing things, and you're going to be uh, exploring avenues and stuff that that I'm not. Because we're all unique individuals. That's what my conjoined twin says. What? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So my, whatever my take is on your work is, uh, notwithstanding, but it's sometimes it's nice to say, Hey, look at this. Look what I made. Look what I made, mom. You know, that's nice to me. Don't stand in front of my stories. Yeah. Uh, what am I missing? You need to stop drinking workahol, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Frankly. Uh, frankly, you're considering moving to Canada. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. So this is, uh, the Citadel at the end of time suggestion that I am finally getting down to. And, uh, you know, i do a couple little things here. I'm trying to think about where to go with this page. And I have an idea for it that just kind of popped into my noggin. And this is what I'm referring to about just getting into your work. And as soon as you can just start putting marks down on a surface, then ideas are going to come to you. Some people need formal planned out approach. Some people need really specifically laid out stories. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I find that just start drawing. Here's the idea. Just start drawing something of said idea and uh and then and then the stuff can flow from that so frank has been considering moving to canada since he was eight well make sure you pack some mucklucks eh huh balaclava there balaclava weather here fella you know anyhow so i got some ideas for what to do with this page and uh I, I do advocate that if anybody sees a one-page comic idea suggested that you got a hot take on, you know what? I would have done. I would have done it like this. Do it. Do it. And the reason I say do it is uh, because you're going to uh, to do something with the same the same story that uh, is so different and unique from whatever bonkers nonsense I'm doing. What a mess this is. Um, and I like to see that. Um, you know, I uh, there's no hard, fast rule that says this is the only way to tell a story. That's the beautiful thing about stories is that uh, we're reinterpreting similar stories in lots of fantastic different ways over time. Uh, Philip says, I need a good white pen like you were using. Are you referring to the jelly roll? Are you referring to the craft smart because craft smart you can find at any michael's or maybe most generic uh stores hobby lobby in the states or but try michael's for that because i think it is their brand and uh, it's produced by acme which also produces by the way posca pens and it also produces deco color and so these i would argue it goes A, B, C, and C being the highest rank for uh, opaqueness. But price-wise, 
they go up that way too. So uh, if it's jelly rolls, you can find those everywhere. They're, they're even at uh, the wall of Mars. Uh, for whenever you get back to using physical work. Uh, Phil, Paper Mate Flare Medium Black Ink. Are we talking about this one? This is a Bic. I'm actually using a Bic instead of a uh, Paper Mate today. Well, that's Jim's favorite. It's Paper Mate Flare Medium Black Ink. That's awesome. That's his favorite. Uh, do it. Stop telling me how I should do it. That's right. Uh, Craft Smart. Yeah, they, uh, some people say I don't believe in those, the, some bias that some people might have about expensiveness denotes quality. I think that uh, there's all kinds of different ways that you can uh, string a bow. You know, I think that there's all kinds of different things that you can use, and there's all kinds of different weird combinations that you can do. Like this is uh, Faber Castell, and uh, Faber Castell is um, you can find these at again Indigo Chapters, any at Walmart, wherever. But the white one is very, very light, right? And uh, so even though that these are both white mark making medium, you get such a different result in those. And there's nothing to be, uh, nothing wrong with jumping, jumping medium either, throwing in some white pencil crayon in this stuff. You get all kinds of different results. And of course you use different pencil crayons, you're gonna get different levels of, uh, of um, strength in, in those as well. But uh, yeah. It's just having fun, trying different things, playing, exploring, and hard, fast rules about you should only use this with this, or you can only do that on that. Um, uh, yeah, defy those conventions because uh, that's you're never going to find different ways to do stuff if you're always doing the same as everybody else. Right? Right. Okay. Okay. Look at that mess. It's a hot mess. Very excited to be using my red Posca pen. It's a red Posca pen. pen. All right. Here we go. Little little punches just to push around the values a little bit. Um, yeah, so I mean that when I say send me whatever, I want to see whatever and uh, try whatever. You know, that's how you figure out how you're saying what you're saying with whatever the projects are that you're doing. You're going to have different, uh, different outcomes than the next person. But it's never going to happen if you don't allow yourself just that moment. If you don't allow yourself to just try something different. I, uh, it's not that, you know, I'm all about defying, defy every convention, you know, no, have, uh, have the ability to be open is what I mean. Uh, what do we got? We got a question here. Hey, am I a Harvey Kurtzman fan? It's one of, uh, this is one of Jim's all time favorite. And that's a great favorite to have. Uh, he uses white out a lot. Yes, indeed, he did. Um, there is uh, Will Elder, Harvey Kurtzman, um, Kriegstein, uh, Wally Wood, right? Uh, a lot of those guys back to the EC days, the early, Mar the early Mad days, uh, a lot of those uh, illustrators and writers, um, they had a real comprehension of the fact that if you put something down and it doesn't work, white it out and don't worry about it at all. And if you're working in a way that you can put down a black field and then add white over top of it, that'll work, right? It's It was all about telling the story before it was about having uh, everything look, you know, perfectly placed down lines and things like that. And so, yeah, I'm a big fan of guys like Harvey Kurtzman and, uh, and you know, the, the mad bunch of guys and 
and a lot of the EC artists. There's a lot of really fantastic stuff that came out of those. And then there's a bunch of creators that you wouldn't necessarily think to look at. And I'm, I'm a big advocate of those for people, especially if you're looking at uh, sequential illustration. Um, okay, so here's something. If you like, um, there's a guy, I'm going to write his name down, Pete Beard. Now, Pete Beard does all of these videos on, on YouTube where he talks about illustration and illustrators, and he goes back into the 1800s and talks about the heyday of magazine and newspaper illustration. And he has videos, I think he's at 90 some odd for his regular videos, and that's where he features three or four individual creators and talks about a synopsis of their career. And then I think in addition to that, he has a good 15 or 20 focused episodes where he talks about specific creators. Now, uh, Ronald Searle or uh, Windsor McKay or uh, um, yeah, names escape me, of course, because I'm looking for them. But uh, it's, it's a wonderful YouTube that will give you so many different looks and so many different insights into so many different artists and seeing all the different ways that they would do they're very, very unique and individual interpretations of how to tell stories. So that is a real gift. Somebody like Pete Beard doing that. And, uh, and he's got a really, if you like that, uh, S, SM, SMRS, whatever it's called, if you, uh, he's got a fantastic voice. He's like, those later daughters I don't know anything about. <laughs> it's just smooth, smooth like silk. Um, and, uh, I, I think that there's fantastic insights that you can get from that. And at the same time, I think that if you like contemporary illustration, you need to check out things like the American society of illustrators, because they would put out an annual book for that. I think it was called spectrum. And, uh, they, 300, 400, 600 pieces. In every book and it's all the people submitting stuff to be judged in different categories and there's such a wild and diverse amount of creative expression out there look at things outside of comics if you want to or look at if you're okay let's say anything let's say any specific medium or genre per se uh any specific thing you owe it to yourself if you're painting, look at non-painters. Look at uh, physical works. Look at uh, just simple illustration work or sketch work. Uh, it will improve your painting. Uh, if you look at, uh, if you're just a, an illustrator with, with pencil, pen, or whatever, look at paintings. And you may hold your brush or your pencil differently. You may turn your pencil more on its side and do more shading in, in, your, in your drawing. You know, uh, it's an absolute liberation to look at other people's uh, approaches to things. And there is such a wealth of things to, to, to discover and to find out. And you'll pick different heads and names out of bags. You know, like uh, look at Brian Stelfreeze's comics. This is a, an early airbrush guy in, in comic books. And what a different take on everything he did because it was it's far more graphic and it's in, in it's sort of airbrush graffiti kind of an approach. And it doesn't look like graffiti. I'm not saying that, but the airbrush approach of having to do this field of value for here, this field of value for here, this field of value for here, and there's a leg, right? So if, uh, well, I don't like manga, just look at manga. There's, there's stuff that happens in manga that is going to change your way of looking at comics. Um, it's, it's the same as for music, listen to music, wilds and varied, right? And you'll begin, develop a more discerning taste for certain sounds and certain approaches, but look at, look at the larger swath of creative approaches in whatever specific field you're looking at, you're, you're, you're invested in yourself. But if, uh, if you're illustrating, there's so many r random random and beautiful and strange creators out there um the uh look at the look up the cats and jammer kids 
I know that's a, a random suggestion, but look at the Katzenjammer kids. They're 1915, 1910, 1920, 30. I don't know what the time, but early 1900s. And uh, it's a, a German Bauhaus artist that came over to New York and did a, a periodical, a newspaper periodical. And so if you can imagine serility of shape and form being more important to him than uh you know representation like like recognizable these are all these are all kids of the same age and same size no one kid is incredibly tall another one's incredibly rotund they're all very much about a form you know and that's that's a fantastic way to attack things you know and you're going to see some stuff the more uh, the more classic you look for uh in in uh, in art in the periodicals you're going to see unfortunately representations of of the cultural bias that goes on at the time or how poorly people would represent people of color or whatever else right i i never know what term to use i don't unless i say people of color and i make myself cringe right away because we all have color but you know what i mean terrible terrible representations uh, even windsor mckay did tales of the jungle imps which is you know, horrible, but it's, it's of the time, right? And it doesn't forgive it, but at the same time, it's, that's a stupid time. But there's, uh, there's all kinds of fantastic things to get out of creator's work and to look for and find. Um, Gene Colon, Gil Kane, uh, uh, Ernie Colon. Uh, these are, Ernie Colon is one of those, uh, comic artist that does not get enough respect it is maybe some of the most clean line absolute intimate simple suggestion of form of dimensionality to the human figure in his uh, in his drawings you know what a, what a gift that is you know but you'd be surprised what changes your mode of thought there was a painting that I found that I came across when I was uh, in high school uh, by a painter named Anselm Kiefer. Kiefer like Sutherland, A N S E L M, Anselm Kiefer. And he did this painting of this pyramidal structure, completely abstract, completely throwing, I don't know, everything but the kitchen sink at it. And in the execution of this painting he is actually uh, sewn into the canvas uh, a shepherd's cane which to me was wild right and then you got your your Rauschenbergs and you and your 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 crazy artist that you know all the all the material that you need for making art you can find in a New York square block which is true you know especially if that New York square block has a hardware store or an art store in it but there's another, that's a guy who uh, nailed a chair to a canvas, you know, or painted a goat, you know, like it's just, sometimes people get weird. I don't understand a lot of uh, contemporary and modern gallery art today. I, I find uh, galleries have no mistake, always been elitist, always will be. They cater to money. The larger the gallery, the more it caters to money. And that's just the nature of that industry is what it becomes over time. It's less about the individual creator and more about the, uh, you know, the pretense of it all. But, uh, you know, there's there's a, a move away from, from the foundation of works and a move towards deconstructive works and and well to me that's problematic when somebody ties a bunch of sticks together and nails them to the wall and calls it a drawing i think that's ridiculous but there is something to be said for deconstructing how you work like there's absolutely nothing wrong with drawing this okay and then on the same on the same page you do you do this right and and 
you make the un the unbalanced windows and you reduce this image down as though it's you know being drawn by a kid and have it even bleed over into your other thing and while my, some people might go what are you doing right that uh, there's something to to be said for this i mean there's something that you can do with your storytelling by having by having these different interpretations and these different approaches and and pushing pushing this the the way that you would attack a, a visual image so that you know take yourself out of the comfort zone and see what this gives you that might be different because you can work it into your story it's it's the same citadel at the end of time and everybody that gets to the citadel sees it in a different way so now you can use a whole bunch of different ways to represent the same citadel right and creatively it allows you a little more exploration a little more a little more playing around with your your visual uh, imagery other people might think that's crazy but i'm not interested in what that what that thought is i i'm interested in exploring and uh and throwing different things at the wall and seeing what sticks you know which is why i do so many different stories in different medium and uh because what i'm really trying to pursue for myself isn't necessarily the the spit and polish of the medium the fancy finish uh i'm trying to push myself storytelling wise so to the back to the original point specifically my way of having my own voice is by putting a lot of expectation aside and my way of trying to find my individual voice is by saying uh, I'm focusing on one aspect of things as opposed to having an identifiable concern over another and in this context it's I'm focusing on storytelling and trying to storytell in different ways and and uh, to try different things together and see what does and does not work and I really appreciate people joining me on on this journey and, and involving themselves and suggesting things that's great that really helps me and it helps me not because I have a short of, of, of ideas that's uh, you know this this uh, this thing never rests right but but what it does help me with is that uh, it, you give me notions that I wouldn't have you know you say hey do a thing about rock and roll librarians okay right what is that what, what's the way I can approach that and that's fun that's the sort of stuff we need to do for ourselves and if people need prompts from one another there's all kinds of facility facilitation that's out there i know that uh um and diddy has a bag that you can pull three words out of and make something with the three words you know or uh there are nerds like me that have these libraries of all these different creators work that i'd love to share with you you know or there's uh people that have a hang up on a different country than the one they live in and want to explore all the visual elements of that maybe I'm, I'm talking about Canadian superhero team Frank not necessarily but you know there's just all kinds of different ways that we can do things and there's all kinds of different ways that we can uh, tell the same story in different ways but there's stories that I probably necessarily wouldn't consider telling unless I get some crazy suggestions. You never uh, find progression in anything. And what I mean by progression is uh, you're never going to see a change, something, something having a different common way of being interpreted from the way it's always been done until somebody does it different vacuums would have been always the same until dyson came along and created the dyson vacuum it's a very different kind of vacuum am i advocating dyson no i don't even have one but um but what dyson did with 
their approach to building vacuum is very different than how traditional vacuums work. You know, the Dyson fan, that's magical, but you put your hand right in it. Anyways, so, you know, little changes, little bits and bobs everywhere. Just they sort of change the game, little different approaches that people have, right? At the end of the day, celebrate you. Celebrate you. Maybe you're not the most popular person on planet Earth. Maybe you don't have a thousand followers or whatever ridiculous number some people get up to. Um, 100,000 people because I do, you know, TikTok dances. I don't know. It's a different world. But are, are you comfortable with you? Are you comfortable with what you're doing and how you're doing it? I hope you said yes because that's what I'm more interested in. I don't feel like I have quite uh, uh, understood. I don't feel like I've, I've got a clear understanding of who I am in the larger creative community or a sense that, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm making my mark. Everybody knows who I am. I'm not that guy. Um, but at the same time, I do. And while I might not be, you know, uh, celebrated in the ways that other human beings get celebrated for whatever audacious thing they do, I, I enjoy the interactions with people that I have. And I enjoy that uh, I can I do my weird things in my weird ways. And people, uh, it seem people seem to be vibing with it. Great, you know, I'm really, really happy and I'm really appreciative of that. And at the end of the day, that's my creative voice. That's the voice that I'm doing my thing and I'm doing it my way. And there's people here that are doing their thing and doing it their way. And like uh, Jim Luhan said earlier, that's how we all do. That's how we all vibe together. That's how we are. Uh, paraphrasing. Sorry, you didn't specifically say that, Jim um that's 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 where a lot of people connect on here that's where you know we're all finding kindred spirits or we're all finding a sort of sense of community and a sense of and if that helps your sense of value great perfect perfect you don't need to be fancy guy at the big superhero comic convention signing all of the 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 books for all of the kids and uh you know with your rock star aesthetic or whatever else it is and you know you don't need to be any of those things you don't need to be any of those specific guys or gals to to have a sense of hey the creative expression that i'm pursuing at the very least if this is a, a benefit for you know that i appreciate you doing whatever you're doing I'm far more interested in seeing the weird individual different thing that you're doing than, you know, the expected norm. They just locked in, tried and true, do it the same as everybody else because that's what you've been told are the rules. This isn't an advocation for go and be a rebel maker, do things different. You know, defy, defy the industry. And that's, that's not what this is. This is be comfortable with how you work. And by extension of that, I think that people can find comfort in who they are. I think that by extension of that, people can have a, a different uh, kind of equilibrium than they maybe would have had otherwise. I think that people can find, hey, you know, it's not the same as everybody else does but I, I like doing things this way and you know even if it is and people dismiss this and beat it up a lot uh but i think there's a lot of value in my mom likes what i do you know and it's just uh whether it's your mom or whoever it is um fine find find that person that sees you and gets you and goes 
Yeah. Okay. All right. I like that. That's that looks cool. That's neat. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's it. That's the fun. There's somebody out there looking for your work. It's it's uh, half naked, you know, uh, shamaness in a in a strange as yet undiscovered tribe in a weird hut somewhere in a jungle or or whatever it is but they're going to see what you do and go revelation that is the way that i have been seeing the universe for however long in my thousand years of being alive a person could exist my point is is that there's somebody out there and they're going to figure out what you're doing and do that uh frank frankly says i like that jim doesn't do animation the same way others do it he has found his voice in how he does it. It stands out as something unique and cool. In deedly do, frankly. And I'm really, really, thank you very much. I'm really quite impressed you uh, sharing that for everybody, too. Thanks. Uh, compliments to you and compliments to Jim, because here's, some, here's a funny story. Um, when I was first looking at Gary Hodges said, you got to check out my, my buddy Jim's work. And I started looking at Jim's uh, animations on his site. And I had a feeling of, uh, because when I was, man, going back to my 20s at least, I had an, uh, an interest in the different anima animation voice of guys like uh, Bill Plimpton, Fr you know, Frank Bash uh, Bakshi, if I'm not, I hope I'm saying it right. And I'm not talking about the the fact that the rotoscoping of Lord of the Rings or Fire and Ice where he's adapting for Zeta. I'm talking about his weird stuff that he would do um, that is, you know, highly confronting to people because of its subject matter. But there was just something about the authenticity of how these guys were drawing their own ways. Hair high for me with Plimpton. And then anyways, I find out that... Uh, the gyms work with Plimpton. And I'm like, well, there we go. You know, that's a wonder. That's a what a blessing that is to see that connection because here's a guy who's got his own style and his own voice and similar to another person like that. Hey, everybody, it's Gary Hodges. How you doing, Gary? Um, so having authenticity and having having the ability to say, this is this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it. And and uh, I'm this is what's comfortable for me and how I work. Uh, that's hard for some people to stick to. It really is. It's hard. It's a challenge for some people because at some point you're going to be like, maybe I'd be more successful if I looked like such and such. And, and, and other people will say, well, maybe if I drew a little more this way, I could get work in, in such a fashion, or maybe I should just take this job with Disney, you know, whatever it is. Um, somebody out there appreciates your voice. Somebody out there appreciates what you do. And uh, kudos to you, Frank, and, and kudos to you uh, for recognizing uh, that about Jim's work. And kudos to you, Jim, for singing your own song, buddy. And anybody else that's doing that. I mean, mind you, I might be talking about a couple names specifically. But uh, I, I mean this for everybody. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Comments. Hello, Gary. Chris was just saying how you need to put more hot babes into your comics. Gary, we got to talk. Yeah, that's a fun one. That's a that's a that's a way to walk into a conversation. I need to what? <laughs> There's a there was a book I put out years and years ago. It was uh, called uh, Radio Radio Theater. It was this first series of short stories that I would do, and uh, <laughs> you get, I get that feedback a lot. More people with powers. More, more, make it more like a '90s comic. You got more pouches on everybody's costumes. <laughs> um. Hey, yes, you do, Frank. You do. You definitely do. And they got good ones, too. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So somebody said that to me years and years and years ago. 
and I did these radio theater books and they said, dude, you got to put more pinups in your books. Like, you know, draw some hot babes. And I, I, I promised them, I said, next book, I will have uh, some, uh, some hot ladies in it for you. And yeah. Well, you know, I put them in, uh, in, in their, you know, their skivvies there. Right. I went, yeah. Okay. For you. And uh, I did a uh, uh, pinup. I, I have it somewhere. I can show people. I did a pinup of a couple of ladies on a really hot sweltering day at the senior center and uh they're you know they're wearing their 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 nightgowns and stuff like that but they're sitting on a pile of mattresses and just sweating away but i tried to do what he asked yeah it's tricky it's tricky fulfilling people's wants and needs eh maybe that's why it's more important that we just focus on uh, our own our own ideas our own gym jam ideas Except for you, Gary. More babes. Terrible. <laughs> Frank drops a mic of wax. Yeah, I don't know. Some people might think I'm making a mess out of this, but I'm just tr trying different things and, and doing different little interpretations of, uh, of this doodly do. And that, uh, yeah, you got to have fun. Whatever it is that you're doing, you got to uh, find a way to do it your own way. And sometimes it's not fun. Let's be honest. Sometimes it's arduous. Sometimes it's, uh, I've set myself this objective goal and I got to do it. And uh, I feel like I'm lockstepped into this way that I have to do it. I wish that I hadn't set myself such rigid parameters that I'm working in on this project and uh, it's unfulfilling set that project aside for a moment and do something else right there's uh your due date and your timetable is yours uh, this isn't uh, a monthly paid book from from a mainstream company or, or it's, uh, some expected contract if you're doing your own creative creative journey and your own creativity and you need a rest for a moment from something, take a rest for a moment from something. Well, when's that coming out? When it comes out, you know, because the people that appreciate a thing and the people that truly like it, now this might make might, might, might not make you have a million sales, but the people that appreciate whatever it is that you're doing, they'll wait. They're waiting for it. They'll see it when, when they see it. And it's better that uh, you do it in your way so that what they see is the thing that they've been them waiting for and that's you know your song that's uh i don't know maybe uh that might mean i if if i didn't think that way maybe that would be a way for me to be hey i'm mr G big G giant success guy again i don't yeah that's not uh that's not a motivation there and if your motivation is that stuff then why are you listening to a stream? You need to be nose to the grindstone, focused wholly and completely on whatever the expectation of timetable is. Because that requires that kind of focus, that kind of uh, linear approach of getting it done, getting it done, getting it done. And that's hard. That's, uh, that's hard for folks, understandably so, because... That's a lot of expectation. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, challenges in order to finish uh, a monthly book or or anything with any specific kind of timetable or due date. There's uh, you got to have uh, a fair, you know some some kind of discipline to be able to do that. I don't know if anybody else has any takes on authenticity if anybody else has uh if i'm uh if i'm defying anybody's value of that if uh if there's other insights that people have towards that please feel free to let me know chris you're crazy you're all wrong
Yeah. I don't know. I'm just having fun. At the end of the day, I'm having fun. This is a this is a fun opening panel to try to express that the Citadel at the end of time is seen is seen differently by anybody that sees it. I'm kind of enjoying uh, just doing however I'm doing it. I just want to keep trying to push a couple of little approaches to it in the environment and see what. Uh, What kind of different little plays on that I can make? All right. Uh, what do we got? Sorry, I'm trying to keep up, folks. Uh, frankly, speaks no lie. He he speaks no lies. Frankly, Jim. I realized in putting a book out every other year, it creates a sort of pressure to make each one as good as I can make it. Whereas if it was monthly, I wouldn't feel that way. Excellent, excellent. That's great. That is absolutely a fantastic way of thinking. It's a sort of pressure to for you to pursue it in your way. It's a it's a it's a good pressure. That's a positive pressure for you to say, I want to get this book out every other year. But by even in that statement, you're saying that I'm gonna take that time for me to do it my way and to be comfortable with what I'm putting it out. Or what I'm putting out. I'm sorry. And like I said, as an aside, Gary, your books are amazing, and they're worth the wait. Is it, well, I want it like X Men every month. Then you're reading the wrong book, because you know X Men books are terrible these days. They really are, which is so unfortunate because so many creative individuals are are, are putting their sweat into these things, but they're just too too uh, ham hocked out the door and there's not enough investment in, in a lot of the parts that make good books tick right that's just a, my own opinion by the way anonymous anonymous i almost didn't recognize that you were there anyways i, I try to think of anonymous jokes for anonymous is this why so many writers are alcoholics so they uh, so they chain themselves to the desk I think that anybody that is any sort of level of self-investigation or self-expression, it is a very common and easily susceptible thing to find things to lean into, right? I think that there's a lot of creative people that get into drugs. There's a lot of creative people that, that drink. There's a lot of creative people that uh, are dealing with uh, other challenges, right? And... Uh, and so sometimes we tip a little bit too far because we might confuse those things with inspiration. And so you'll see a lot of people lean a little too heavy in that because they think that that's where the creativity comes from. And maybe for them, they think that that's their release. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's sympathetic magic, right? It's like people that on a baseball team and your team keeps winning because you, you haven't changed your socks change your socks, dude, you know, like, it, it's just, it's the idea of sympathetic magic. And so all I'm, 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 I write great stuff when I'm drunk. Well, if you tried writing more and more sober, the you that comes out when you're drunk might come out when you're sober. You know, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's part of some people's process of self creativity uh, to, uh, to do damage to themselves or to do challenges to themselves, right? Uh, I feed myself constant amounts of sugar, just drinking nonstop amounts of caffeine and, and cola the whole time I'm working, says the guy who generally has a caffeine-free diet cola while he's working. Um, but I, I'm highly requiring on caffeine for me to be able to start doing anything today. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Right now it is. There's a dependency in your body for, for you know, uh, caffeine stimulus because you're drinking caffeine. But that's not true. You know, you you can uh, you can do what you do without that, that caffeine stimulus. It's just finding it. But yeah, a great deal of writers are alcoholics. A great deal of writers aren't. You know, there's a great deal of people that don't drink at all. Right? There's a but we tend to hear more 
people like Schadenfreude, right? The German word for watching other people's suffering or other people go through arduousness. So Schadenfreude is a real thing. So people are far more interested in hearing the bad story than they are the good, as a general rule. Not everybody, not all the time, but you know what I mean. Uh, Gary says, I was just about to make the sympathetic magic point. Touching the brim of your cap before every pitch or whatever. Some creatives fall for that, assume something is critical to the process. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's true, it's not true, right? I wear these, that's where my magic comes from, that's where my art comes from. I just, I wear these because they're, they're comfy. But uh, there's a truth to that. There's a, I have to get up in the morning and I have to do things this way. And if I don't do these things, my whole day is off. Well, yep. Yes, it is. I, I, I always say yes, it is. Because if you believe that, then that's the case. Well, uh, you know, everything's been done before. So I'm not going to work on anything new. I'm just going to, you know, fall into uh, to telling stories about Batman. And there's no new Batman stories, but that's fine. Yeah. That's not true. You know, <laughs> hey, there we go. That's a compliment. Gary is definitely making top sirloin steak, not hamburgers. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah. Definitely. That's a great way to, that's a great compliment just to give a person. You guys are all on fire today with compliments for each other. I love it. And yet, nothing about my singing voice. Huh? I'll give you a little taste. Hooked on a feeling. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jim. I'll go out with you. <laughs> <laughs> love is in the air. Give it a love. Give it a love. Good stuff. We're making connections. I uh, I did the comic jam last night. It was a lot of fun. With uh, uh, a good dozen people came out, and uh, just somebody draws the first panel, passes it in the center of the table. The next person picks up that page, draws the next panel, slides it in the table, so on and so forth. Pages get finished. Every page is a kind of a different comic. Only at one time since 2015 have we ever tried to work on. Um, a story that repeats from page to page and it was called and we're talking we talked last night about are we ever going to do something with that and the piece was called bus brain uh no brain bus brain bus shark diner is what it's called because those are the sort of key story direction points that were going on and they just somehow got amalgamated into one narrative of aspects of each story crossing over into the other one. Point being, I, I find that doing the jam each month for me is uh, a liberating process because I get to see the different ways that other people are working and having to follow somebody else's uh, started page with that narrative that they've started out is such a, a fantastically interesting challenge because they're i you know now i gotta draw a panel for a comic about a beautiful red balloon you know and uh you get some fun things out of that you know you uh you get uh some some different story notes or some different things to say that you normally wouldn't say in your own pieces uh drink more caffeine and draw more hot babes <laughs> that's a challenge with trying to get uh trying to get your secretary to type everything out for you jim that uh siri she's not reliable he's not reliable i'm not sure which it is how does it identify But yeah, it's fun. It's fun because uh, one of the things about doing the jams is that when you're doing a uh, comic, when you're interacting on doing comic stories with children, they don't care. They don't care what you did. They don't care. They, you know, okay, I get it. They'll look at your panel and see a squirrel. Squirrel. 
even though the squirrel is talking about this existential dilemma, the next page that they'll do is another uh, their version of a drawing of a squirrel. But the next panel that they do is their drawing of a version of a squirrel, and it says, "I like nuts." Good enough. <laughs> next, next person, next one in. That's the great thing about you know working with other people is that they're going to do that. They're going to do that leap to uh, you know a different direction in the story than maybe people intended. And uh, that happened last night. <laughs> it was great. It was super fun. I'm nuts. Excellent. Perfect. All right. So I'm just, here's the sigil at the end of time. Everybody sees it differently. I'll do one more right here. And then, uh, and then I think uh, that'll be a day. But uh, yeah, I've, I really, I really enjoy uh, being able to, to, to interact and talk on things. I think that uh, everybody that, that, I think that honestly, everybody that tunes in the stream or, or similar streams or the like, there is a uniqueness to whatever people are doing. There is, and there is a identifiable self that comes through in your work, no matter what. It's the, the, the big challenge that I was, I'm trying to express about earlier is uh, explore that. Don't shy away from that, right? Don't, uh, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And uh, to be able to take that and to turn it out as something that, that works for you, excellent, right? Excellent. <laughs> Didi Willingham for the drop, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful. That's a fan. I want that shirt. <laughs> I wonder if they sell that in 3XL tall. <laughs> That's the great challenge of me buying shirts from other people's sites is that they have to be uh, stupid size. You have that in stupid size? No? Oh, well. Looking for a brush. There we go. That's fantastic, Didi. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, I think uh, I think I uh, came to some kind of salient point today. I think I came to uh, be able to somehow express the thought that I was having. And I hope uh, if anybody else is having this moment where there's a recognition that as you're looking at what you do. And considering it in a larger scope of things and wondering well how do i how does what i what i do fit into the larger genre that i'm i'm, I'm working within how do how do i market myself or how do i position myself in such a way as to be able to find the best place for connecting with other people and in the work that i do i think that it like i said earlier it's a journey that everybody goes through to some extent, but um, in exploring that for myself today uh, and last night, I think I've come to the conclusion that uh, I'm, I'm all right doing my thing. And, uh, and uh, you know, that stuff will come. That stuff will come. And I really enjoy the, the uh, connection with all you maniacs here. Uh, hi, Didi. Uh, at last, some female energy. Excuse me. Oh yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's probably true. Um, so yeah, so I, I basically just saying that uh, if anybody else is on that journey, be be fine with who he is and what you're doing. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, that helps anybody. So, because uh, at the end of the day. It's all about having some fun. <laughs> see, see what you did, Jim? <laughs> we just got these two to go on a date finally, and then that, and that comes up, Jim. You blew it, Jim. You blew it. Blew it. Finally got something happening. There's some traction on that relationship. All right. Well, I think uh, I think I might be signing off in a few minutes, guys. 
the uh, I appreciate uh, everybody hanging out. I hope that uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed what we were chatting about today. And uh, if you are thinking about these things yourself, know that uh, you know there's so many out there. There's, where there's that you're not alone. There's lots of other people doing their own weird thing, and uh, and we're all uh, you know any encouragement that you might need. We got we got you, we got you, boo. But uh, like I said before, if you've got stuff you're working on and want to share it, I'd love to see it. Send it to any of the social whatnots that I've got out there in the world. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see it. Uh, you know, and like I said, I'm not going to, well, uh, here's what I do differently, or let me show you how to draw those problems. That's not happening. I'm, you're not going to get that from me. But uh, sometimes we need that somebody to, just somebody to send it to. Just somebody to say, hey, here, here it is. And uh, and that helps. All right, keen is a jelly bean. So I'm going to take off for now. Thanks everybody for coming and hanging out. I'll be back tomorrow at two o'clock. I will have the citadel at the end of time page finished for you. And I got a story direction that I'm going in, and uh, I think it's nice and weird, but uh, but it's going to be different. That's for sure. And uh, just trying different stuff, you know. Uh, but yeah. Uh, like I said before, if you got one page comic ideas or, or any kind of suggestions whatsoever, you want to throw three words at me, whatever it is you want to do, let me know. I'm, I'm good for it. I'll, I'll take a crack at it. I uh, Yesterday's page was number 81. So at this point, uh, as soon as I hit uh, 100, I'm going to, uh, I think, have to put a book up. So... Uh, <laughs> This is the best. This is the best. Uh, if you if you guys are holding hands and walking away into the sunset, can we just get a little bit of patter music? Anybody who's got a piano at home can ding, 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 ding. Can you just play a little bit of that? Just for yourself and the rest of us will just pick up on it in the ether. But uh, that or some sort of uh, crooning, crooning shot. And scene. See you tomorrow if you're if you're up for it. Two o'clock, I'll be back. In the meantime, you know, get out, get creating, like I always say. And I hope to see it. Bye for now. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.